Right, the next thing we're going to cover is the, how do you obtain historical data. Earlier, we already used the uh, symbol to extract a futures object. Uh, we did a so-called practice on CL F16. So what we're going to do now is the, how do we actually uh, obtain the historical data of these uh, futures contract itself. Um, right now, the futures data is available in research via a new history function in the experimental library. Now, it is quite possible that this API name might change or, or the so-called input might change. So um, we'll keep an eye on it. For now, this is the actual structure itself. Uh, in terms of the um, functioning, how it functions is very similar to the get pricing uh, if you are doing it for equities within the Quantopian research itself. So let's uh, import history, first of all, from the quantopian.research.experimental import history. So you, how do you actually make use of this uh, history? You call it by providing assets, uh, the fields that you want to pull the data out of. What are these fields? There's the open, high, low, close, volume. We'll come back to that in a minute. The frequency, do you want it in the form of daily or minutely? The start date that you want this data to start from and the actual end date itself. Now here, I print out the full documentation of the uh, history. Here you can load, basically a description, descriptor here is load a table of historical trade data. Uh, you provide the symbols, which we did earlier. Um, I'm going to show you with an example, which Jamie did uh, with this uh, notebook. Uh, the fuse itself, the frequency, the start, end, symbol, and also how do you handle missing data. So what we'll get returned is actually a pandas panel or data frame or series. Right, let's uh, get the close price and volume of the crude oil contract uh, for the two months leading up to the delivery date, which is 2015, December 21st. Note that all the pricing data for futures are actually unit price. Uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, the $50 is uh, per barrel. For a crude oil contract, the price is the price per barrel and the contract is for 1,000 barrels, which is the multiplier. Um, in backtesting, the value of the portfolio will change by an amount equal to the price change multiplied by the multiplier. Now, the one thing that I did change or modify Jamie's um, code is that instead of just purely close price and volume, I've added uh, all the possible fuels that you can use to extract different uh, so-called data uh, as you like. So here, notice that I put in price, open price, high, low, close price, volume, and contract. Close price actually is the same as price. Um, so for the history function, you need to enter the so-called symbols. Let me just scroll up a little bit just so that you can actually see, uh, minimize this. So you need to provide the assets, the actual fields that you want to actually extract, the frequency, in this case, we are taking or rather requesting daily uh, data, the start date and also the end date 2015, uh, October 21st uh, to 2015, December 21st. So basically we are getting as the stated here, two months leading up to the actual delivery date itself. So here we print the, here we print the first five value of what we actually received back from uh, the research platform. So I'll just run that. History is not defined, so I think I need to import this. I don't need to print that once more. I just need to run this. Okay, here we go. So you notice that I said earlier price is the same as close price. Here, there are two of them are actually the same. You have the open, the high, the low, and the close price, the volume traded for the day, and finally, uh, the actual futures or the contracts uh, that we have extracted here for this uh, futures data. All right, this is the price plot of the crude oil January 2016 con futures contract. Uh, if you look at the price, uh, I've uh, denoted a marker that basically mark one day. Um, you can see that here uh, we are plotting the price and also volume. Now the volume, I have changed it slightly. Um, instead of plotting a line chart, I plot. Uh, decided to plot a bar chart instead just to show the amount of volume that is being traded. 
If you study the chart carefully, you will notice that from November 16th onwards, the volume picked up substantially and stay high right throughout trading roughly 40,000 to 50,000 um, during this period here, uh, generally average around 30,000. Uh, and it's dropped 300,000, I'm sorry. And then it dropped substantially come 2015, December 17th. If I can help you to remember uh, a little bit about the actual futures, when it actually expired or end date is December 21st. So December 21st is actually the date that the, um, is the last day of trading. So three days before it, the volume start to drop substantially. This is one of the key characteristics of uh, futures contract, especially for crude oil, because on a monthly basis, futures contracts come to maturity. Uh, so what the players or the hedges, the speculators and also commercials tends to do is that they buy the most active month or the front month. As soon as it comes close to expiry, they roll over to the next month, next active month. What do I mean by roll over? What that really means is that you sell the current contracts that you have, which is the most recent one, the one that's about to expire, and then you buy the subsequent month. So in this case, what they are most likely will be doing is they're selling the January month and go and buy the February month concurrently at the same time. So basically what you have here, the comment here is that the rise and subsequent drop in trading volume prior to the delivery date of a contract is really a typical behavior for futures. Uh, let's see what the volume looks like for a series of consecutive contracts. So here what we're looking at uh, really is the uh, com is to compare between maturity dates volume. What we're doing here is we pick up January, February, March, April, May and June crude oil futures contract for 2016. And we are storing the historical price for this period 2015, October until 2016, June and it's the daily uh, price and we're only pulling out the volume data only. Uh, this CL contracts is the assets that we are interested to study, which is these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six futures contracts here. And we are storing it into this variable called crude oil consecutive contract volume. And when we plot these, let me just run these three cells. You will Notice, let me just highlight them one by one. Um, this is the, the, I guess you can call this blue. Sorry, I'm slightly colorblind. You can see this is the most recent one. This is the January 2016. You will notice that this is the picked up, which is the contract that we look at. And notice the crossover to the next one, which is the green one. That's the crude oil February futures contract. And once it actually coming close to the expiry date of the February contract, then the March one start to kick in, which is the red one here. And on and on it goes, followed by, this looks like purple now, and this looks like blue. Anyway, a good thing they're not side by side. So you notice that this one picks up and it drops off. When it drops off, the teal or green picks up as well. And once it's dropped off, this um, picks up. Finally, this is light blue, I take it. So essentially what you're looking at is really a typical behavior of futures contract. Uh, when that, Con futures contract become the active month, liquidity start to increase substantially, a lot of uh, contracts is being traded. Once it get close to expiry, uh, earlier you saw three days before expiry, it start to drop substantially and the volume uh, that is being traded usually go over to the subsequent month and the subsequent month volume starts to pick up substantially on and on. It goes that way. The comment here basically say trading activities jump from one contract to the next and the transition happened just prior to the delivery date of each contract. This phenomenon can make it difficult to work with futures, uh, especially if you come from the equity space uh, where you're used to only one asset and one ticker right throughout. And then here you have every month something different. How are you going to do a back testing? It just makes it difficult to um, work with. You have to actually treat it in a slightly different manner. Having to explicitly reference a series of transient contracts when trading or simulating futures uh, backtesting uh, can be a real hassle. So in order to trade subsequent 
uh, or consecutive contracts for the same underlying futures, professionals tend to use what is called continuous futures. So let's uh, move on to look at that uh, futures right now.